A sound mass appraisal methodology is vital to accurately reflect the values of all property classes. As mentioned earlier, a computer-assisted mass appraisal, or CAMA system, is an automated system for maintaining property data, valuing property, notifying owners, and ensuring tax equity through uniform valuations. As an assessor, you'll rely on your CAMA system to ensure that all properties are valued uniformly and equitably. It's important that you understand your CAMA's capabilities and can use the system to reflect and determine the most accurate market values. A comprehensive CAMA system can be updated at any time and can make the assessor's job much easier. Some of the main components requiring re review are land tables. Land tables should be updated annually and they are based on the real estate market. Assessors must also track whether the parcel is considered a prime lot or if it contains excess land over and above minimum zoning requirements. The system also needs to identify any special condition factors applied to the parcel, such as topography, waterfront, or other influences that may affect value. Building cost tables. Building cost tables need to be updated annually to reflect current reproduction costs. These tables can be verified by cost manuals that contain local cost indexes. Local builders and contractors can also be referenced for pricing support. Depreciation tables also need to be updated annually and should show the typical loss in value at various ages for different types of properties. CAMA must also be capable of updating and displaying property record card changes as soon as any data or informational changes are made. The collection and maintenance of current and accurate property inventory data is a critical element in the development of uniform and equitable market values. The better the data, the more accurate the assessed values. This is why it's so important to have a good cyclical inspection program. Assessing staff and vendors should know how to inspect properties and be consistent when entering the data. A community-specific data collection manual should be available for review in every assessor's office. There are three main property valuation methods. Number one, the sales comparison approach. The most common approach to value is the sales comparison approach, also known as the market approach. This method is predominant for residential one to four family dwellings and land. Values are developed by comparing sales that have similar attributes as the subject property. Number two, the cost approach. Another method used for property valuation is the cost approach. The cost approach considers the cost of construction minus depreciation plus land. The fundamental premise of the cost approach is that a potential user of real estate won't or shouldn't pay more for a property than it would cost to build an equivalent. Number three, the income approach. The third method is the income approach. The income approach allows investors to estimate the value of a property by taking the net operating income and dividing it by the capitalization rate. The income approach is used to value income producing properties, such as apartment buildings, commercial real estate, and multifamily homes. The sales comparison approach or market approach is most often relied upon to value residential properties. However, it's important to remember that using a mass appraisal system, the unique components of an individual property have to be identified and valued, such as number of bathrooms, heating system, finished basement, etc. Within the database, there are pricing tables. These tables provide a base price per square foot for each style and grade of a dwelling. There are also tables used to identify the unique attributes of an individual property that are applied to help fine tune the value. Usually, this is calculated applying the replacement cost new of the structures, less the depreciation in adding in the market value of the land. RCNLD is a common acronym used to describe replacement cost new, less depreciation. Thus, the total value will equal RCNLD of a building plus the land value. Quite often, assessors will refer to this approach in CAMA as applying market adjusted costs, but essentially they are relying on market sales for the model. 
Here's an example of the basic math to calculate a single-family home. A single-family home built in 2007 would cost $250,000 to rebuild new today. The depreciation due to being 10 years old is determined to be $25,000. This is subtracted from the replacement cost new. Next, the market land value for this parcel is determined to be $175,000. The total property value will equal $400,000. Besides the market and cost approaches, land valuation can additionally be considered in overall valuation methodology. In an ideal situation, raw or vacant land sales take place and buildable lots generally sell for about the same price in a neighborhood. If this were the case, assessors would generally have a good idea of what the indicated land value for that immediate area would be. However, due to a general lack of overall land sales, the land residual technique, also called abstraction, needs to be developed. This methodology involves taking the improvement values, or RCNLD, and subtracting that from the valid sale price of improved properties that would equal the indicated land value. You can reference the Certification Standards IGR for examples of land valuation methods. As an example, a single family home with a small yard sold for the price of $400,000. Then, by deducting the determined dwelling price, or RCNLD, of $225,000, this would equal an indicated land value of $175,000. The assessor then compares the assessed land value to the indicated land as a ratio to see how close they are to an acceptable and reasonable range. A statistical sample usually should contain at least five sales in the neighborhood to be conclusive. For many reasons, commercial and industrial sales information is often unreliable, as these properties are often bought and sold on investor expectations. Earlier, we briefly described the three acceptable valuation methods for determining a more accurate final property value, the sales comparison approach, the cost approach, and the income approach. DOR guidelines require that at least two of these approaches to value be supported and submitted for commercial and industrial properties at the time of certification. Now, let's discuss the income approach when determining property valuation. The income approach uses capitalization to convert the anticipated benefits of the ownership of property or net income into an estimate of present value. To apply the income approach, you must gather estimated or actual rental income data of properties in your community to determine the rental market. You then capitalize estimated income of a property into an estimate of current value. Sources for the information are owners, tenants, industry publications, and other sources for use in valuation purposes. Assessors specifically have authorization to request the information from owners directly under Massachusetts General Law, Section 38D of Chapter 59. Assessors often refer to the forms as income and expense forms under 38D. Requesting this information from owners of income producing property on an annual basis is a best practice. It is very important information acquired under Chapter 59, Section 38D is to be kept confidential. Income and expense forms under Chapter 59, Section 38D are usually sent out at the beginning of each calendar year. Rent, vacancy, and expenses reported on the returned forms should generally be considered as the overall market numbers and not actuals. In instances where only a few are returned, the assessors should resend additional questionnaires, conduct on-site interviews, talk with local real estate brokers, or search local websites for leasing or sales information. The capitalization rate is used to convert the anticipated benefits of the ownership of the property into an estimate of present value. This is most commonly known as, simply, the cap rate. Cap rates are calculated by dividing the annual net income, or NOI, of a property by the purchase price. So a low cap rate 
indicates less risk and a higher value. A high cap rate indicates higher risk and lower value. Let's walk through the basic steps you would take to calculate the total value of an income producing property. Remember to use the data from the income and expense forms the property owners are asked to complete annually to support these calculations. First, you'll need to determine the potential gross income or PGI for the year. You'll then subtract any losses or vacancy as well as any expenses incurred by the property owner to get the net operating income or NOI. You can then divide the NOI by the capitalization rate or the rate of return expected on the investment to determine the total value of the property. In simple terms, the income approach gathers rental income data and then capitalizes that income into an estimation of value. It is important to be familiar with the IRV formula when working with the income approach to value. The formula used to estimate the value is known as IRV, income divided by rate equals value, where I stands for income, R for rate, and V for value. The IRV formula helps with three different calculations. Income divided by rate equals value. Rate multiplied by value equals income and income divided by value equals rate. At the right, you will notice the formula. Now imagine a multiplication symbol between the R and the V. You will become very familiar with this formula as an assessor. For example, the subject property is estimated to provide a net income of $50,000 per year. The cap rate, the general rate of return on investments of similar nature or similar stability is running at 10%. Given this information, the final income approach value equals $50,000 divided by 0 0.10 equals $500,000 value. In summary, as an assessor, you will rely on your CAMA system to ensure that all properties are valued uniformly and equitably. The CAMA system must be comprehensive and be constantly updated. Time trending is sometimes used. Clear evidence indicating that the market is changing at a fast pace is required. RCNLD is replacement cost new, less depreciation. It is the cost to construct a building, less depreciation. Land valuation. Due to a general lack of overall land sales, the land residual method is often used. You need to know the three main approaches to property valuation, sales comparison, cost approach, and the income approach. The IRV formula is a great tool for assessors when valuing income producing properties.